What's up, what's up? Welcome back to the Black Top Goat Cast. I am your host, William Goat. The Black Top Goat Cast is a podcast that reviews the highlights from the tournaments ran at the Black Top Goat Classic and all things basketball. Today, I'm reviewing my latest tournament, the Ultimate All Time Top 5 Games, where the teams were formed from watching basketball YouTuber Johnny Arnett's Ultimate Franchise Teams playlist. But before I get into it, Please like, comment on this video for the algorithms, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with us. So I'm going to give myself another round of applause, three tournaments knocked down, and I must say I am having a blast running these tournaments, uh, the games uh, getting better and better with each um, with each game, it is the the two K gameplay is very very dope. Um, of course, uh, for those just tuning in, the Blacktop Goat Classic is uh two K twenty four simulations of uh different players or people's individuals top fives uh going head to head in the block top fashion in 2k um and for this for this one uh i chose uh johnny arnett's channel johnny arnett is a basketball youtuber and his i guess it's like basketball history and everything uh he gives his perspective a very educated perspective i i must say but once he started to create his this uh this segment called the ultimate all time franchise teams playlist, I was already in the middle of doing the Smokers Cup and I was like, Oh wow, yes, I'm already a fan of him and this is like content gold for me to grab onto and just uh start and see how these uh top five starters yeah so i took the teams i think he's up to like 17 right now but i took the first six teams that that he started with and uh put them in the tournament which is called the ultimate all-time top five games one thing i did notice is that um a lot of his rosters are similar to 2K rosters. Um, and in some cases might be better. You know, all teams are our nets in this tournament. Um, and I like to, you know, I, I, comparing them, comparing them to the 2K model because NBA 2K has the all-time teams um, put together, their own all-time teams, and some of his all-time teams match up with 2Ks. Like, for instance, the Chicago Bulls, his starting five for his ultimate franchise Bulls team is the same starting five that NBA 2K has for their all-time Bulls team. So we can make some comparisons there where see where where his team and 2K could, you know, wh what what's different, what's which one is better, I don't know. But right now I just want to go over the third tournament, uh the ultimate all-time top 5 games just explain to you uh, that I started with the first six teams of Johnny Arnett's Ultimate Franchise Teams playlist. And those teams were the Chicago Bulls, the Cleveland Cavs, uh, LA Clippers, the Milwaukee Bucks, Boston Celtics. Yeah, I think that's it. I think I think that was it. Six teams. 
Let me make sure I'm right. Bulls, Cavs, Clippers, Bucks, Celtics. I'm missing one. Oh, yeah, and the 76ers, the ultimate 76ers. Game one, I uh, set up between the ultimate Cavs and the ultimate Clippers. Uh, had a lot of first-timers there on a blacktop, and that was really exciting to see. Uh, between these two teams, the, actually the Cavs were the weakest team out of the six teams. And for this game, I had switched out um, the Cavs Kevin Love, all-time Cavs Kevin Love, for the all-time Timberwolves Kevin Love because at the blacktop, uh, you're not stepping on that blacktop unless you're a 90-plus player, period. Like, if I go, when I go over the teams, unless I'm really doing something real, real specific, which the next few tournaments will be, but when we're talking about the greats and, uh, and basically putting on a great show, I want to make sure that the competition is uh, top notch. So you got to have a 90 and better. So I had to swap out those Kevin Loves to make it a more formidable team because the all-time Cavs had Brad Daughtry, Kevin Love, LeBron James, uh, Kyrie, Uncle Drew Irvin, and Mark Price. Uh, it was Brad Daughtry's first time and Mark Price's first time being on a black top. And they were going against Bob McAdoo, Blake Griffin, Kawhi the Claw, Leonard, Paul George, PG-13, and Chris Paul, CP3. Uh, so, of course, I was expecting the Clippers to win. All of the Clippers, except for Chris Paul, were first-timers at the black top. I was really excited to see Blake Griffin out there. Uh, usually the athletic, uh, from watching the uh, previous tournaments, the more athletic uh, avatars of the basketball players do get busy in the open court or just when it's time to dunk on somebody, they dunk it. So I was excited to see Blake, and he did put on a good show. But uh, CP3 was uh, – he was part of my, my first iteration of my own top five for uh, the viewers' top five tournament uh, that we run, and we're, we're starting the second one. Uh, give details on that later. But, yeah, um, I had CP3 as my all-time guard. But then I was like, you know, as far as competition-wise, like, who do I really want at the point guard? I always had a hard time picking, like, which center and point guard I would run with. I, no matter what team I pick, my top five will always have Tim Duncan, LeBron James, and Kobe Bryant. So I just switched it up. I, LeBron will, as far as my top five goes, LeBron is going to be my point guard. Uh, I know he's he may go down as the greatest small forward of all time, uh, but I like to make the argument of him being definitely a GOAT point guard as well. But between Arnett's ultimate Cavs and ultimate Clips, it was a good back and forth game. Uncle Drew came to play. Uh, Kyrie was really putting on out there, hitting his shots and everything, uh, keeping the clip, keeping the Cavs in the game more so than LeBron. Kind of uh, at the blacktop when LeBron and Kyrie is on the court, kind of LeBron kind of defers to Kyrie. But nonetheless, uh, Blake Griffin down the line, the uh, the the. Clips basically had the game in their hands and they were up by two with point game. It was 15-13 and Blake Griffin found himself on the low block with Mark Price and I thought definitely that the game was over 
But Blake Griffin, he had blew that layup, the mismatch over Mark Price, and Uncle Drew just basically took over from there. It was it was all Kyrie from there. You know, hit the step back uh, game winner over Kawhi, and I had to bless him with the king of the streets that night because uh, – that was a very great victory for him to show that he put on uh, and against that team. I really did not expect the Cavs to beat the Clippers, but it was a hell of a show for them. It was a hell of a show. So moving on to game two between Arnett's version of the Ultimate 76ers versus the Ultimate Celtics, uh, Oh, mind you, these first two games were also play-ins. Being that this was six teams, it was a 16 tournament, so the bottom teams had played in. I put the uh, Bulls into the second round, so the Cavs beat the Clippers, whoever went out of day. They beat the Clippers, and they met the Bulls in the second round. And for the second game, play-in game, uh, the Ultimate 76ers versus the Ultimate Celtics, uh, they the um the winner will play the Bucks. Had had played the Bucks, of course. And for the Ultimate 76ers, it was Wilt Chamberlain, Moses Malone, Dr. J, Hershey Hawkins, and Allen Iverson. Uh first time is Moses Malone, Dr. J, and Hershey Hawkins. For the 76ers, it was their first time on a black top. Once again, I was hyped to see another athletic legend on the court with Dr. J. Uh, the first two tournaments, uh, Dr. J didn't show up, and it made me think, like, uh, he really doesn't show up on people's uh, Mount Rushmore or top five. But he definitely had an impact on the game, and... Uh, I think it needs to be studied uh, because he has a good resume. ABA going into the NBA. And for the ultimate Celtics, it was uh, Bill Russell, um, Kevin McHale, Larry Legend, John Havlicek, and Rajon Rondo with Kevin McHale, John Havlicek, man, and Rajon Rondo making their first appearances on our black top now uh on Nets version of the celtics he said it was based on uh he, he based a lot of these teams period period on how well he thought they would work together so basically like look the Cavs, uh they had a lot of chemistry between lebron kev and kyrie and also with brad daughtry and Mark Price, so we could say that that chemistry and the good shooting of Kyrie had won the game, so he could have been right. He's right on that point, and with these ultimate 76ers, it's more of a talent thing because a lot of these players really didn't play together except for Moses and Dr. J, right, and I think Hershey Hawkins played with them. He might be a little bit later, and we all know Wilt um, battled Bill, in the early 76ers days. Uh, uh, Kevin McHale and John Havlicek, they were the first... Uh, uh, man, John Havlicek, man. This was a classic matchup of the bigs, too. You know, Will and Bill, it was good to see them out there, but the battle really wasn't in between them, right? It was more of a coming out party for Kevin McHale and John Havlicek for me. Uh, Moses uh, did his thing. Uh, the 76ers got off to a fast start. Then the Celtics defense turned up with John Havlicek uh, basically shocking me with his play, man. Like, I did not expect this guy to be this good, but... Um, thinking back to Johnny Arnett's uh, um, take on 
this team and take on John Havlicek and why he put him in his all-time starters for the Celtics, uh, I can understand why. And definitely we're going to go over that video because the Celtics, uh, of course, they won this this tournament. And uh, the top five deep dive, we're going to go into that. So, you know, Rondo's D was top notch. Stealing the ball from Allen Iverson. He was really good. And Larry Legend, just a bonafide blacktop baller. That's a new word for it. I, I, I'm not, I'm a scrap certified G and call these guys on a blacktop bonafide ballers. So Larry Legend he scored like eight points. Take home another king of the streets for one of my tournaments. Um, definitely, I'm going to see how many teams Larry wind up on and just see, like, because he, him and Pippen, right now, they got, like, the most king of the streets. Whenever they show up, you best believe they're going to be in a championship game so far, so far. Moving on to the second round where the ultimate Cavs met the ultimate Bulls. Uh, the ultimate Bulls uh, squad was... Um, Artis Gilmore, Dennis Rodman, Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, and uh, Derrick Rose. Uh, Johnny Arnett's starting five for the Bulls is the same as 2K's. And um, Artis, D. Rose, and Rodman, it was their first time playing on the black top. Wait, nope, nope, nope. I, I think I'm lying right now. Nah, I'm not. No. Rodman, yep, that's a mistake. Rodman played in the last tournament. He played on Chauncey's team. He played on Chauncey's team. I got to remember that. I had swapped him out, too, because we couldn't get Rashid. So uh, Rashid isn't in the game, so I swapped him out. So, all right, so, but definitely Artis Gilmore and D Rose, it was their first time. You know, the Cavs tried their best, but the Bulls' defense was too much for them. Uh yes, uh Arnett's version of the all time ultimate uh Bulls, Chicago Bulls. Yes, defensive monsters. They definitely showed it in this game. It's like it's kinda like it was like a cat and mouse type thing, like they let the Cavs get out to a certain lead, but then they just clamped everything down. Uh Pippen swiped the ball from Mikhail. Artis Gilmore went crazy on the blocks. Uh, I think Michael Jordan had a couple steals as well. They also bullied Kyrie. Uh, Jordan and Pippen had bullied, took turns bullying Kyrie. There was a stint during during the game where uh, three straight Bulls points were scored on Kyrie. Uh, Jordan scored two, and then Pippen scored one over him. Uh, Pippen, once again, bona fide black top baller, once again, um, took home the king of the streets. He responded to every miss that the Cavs made. Every time the Cavs missed, Pippen came back up, made a shot, just put them down. Um, he facilitated well, found Rodman for two alley-oops during the game. Uh, uh, yeah, he he was just all over the place. Like Pippen on a black top is bonafide. Now this next game, uh, between Arnett's version of the Ultimate Celtics and the Ultimate Bucks was definitely, I think, it probably was the best game, uh, of the tournament besides the championship. Uh, really, really good game. Uh, actually, is the most viewed game on my channel right now. Round of applause for that. Yes. Uh, all-time Bucks. The ultimate Bucks had Kareem, Freak, Giannis, of course, Marquise Johnson, Ray Allen, and Big O. Uh, it was Marquis. Uh, Marquise, I, I think it's Marquise Johnson, not Marcus. Marquise Johnson and Ray Allen's first time on the blacktop. 
then we had another classic matchup between uh, some of the greats of the past in the NBA with between Bill and um, Kareem. It was good to see those guys against each other. However, that was not the matchup of the night. This was basically John Havlicek's real, real coming out party because I slept on Marquise Johnson. I'm going to have to look back at um, some of Johnny Arnett's work on the Bucks and Marquise Johnson because this is the first game in Black Top GOAT Classic history that Larry Bird was held to two points. Like, Pippen, he had went up against, and Pippen is arguably one of the greatest defenders in NBA history, and he was putting up 10 points against Pippen, but Marquise Johnson, he he had a really hard time scoring on on him. He really, like, shut him down. Didn't I didn't expect him to play so well against Legend. You know, he held him to only two points, like I said. Um, but John Havlicek took over like he was just like on. He flicked the switch from two point range and was just on for the rest of the game. Like it's like he kind of knew that Larry was having a tough game and he just came through and was lighting it up. And what made it even better was Ray Allen's first game on a blacktop. He was. Uh, the, keeping the Bucks in the game by he, his switch was flicked on and he was in full Jesus Shuttlesworth. He got game mode <laughs> for real because it was a shootout between him and have the check. Uh, and another thing that helped the, the, the Celtics beat the Bucks was Kevin McHale owned Giannis the whole game, man. Kevin McHale came out and, and, and did some things, too. Hit a fadeaway on Giannis, laid him up, even blocked his shot. I was like, wow. And then I, I, I thought about Johnny Arnett's assessment of why he had Kevin McHale in the starting five of his ultimate franchise team, and he breaks down his defense and his long wingspan. Like, he, this guy had damn near like an eight foot wingspan so it's hard to score him and he showed freak that up close and personal John Havlicek took home the king of the street that night top notch game top notch game Rajon Rondo top notch defense against Big Go top notch game for them and we set us up for Definitely set us up for the Bulls and Celtics match. I had fun creating this game, uh, but Michael Jordan, Jordan versus Bird, it gave me those Jordan versus Bird vibes. Uh, as I sit here recording this around the holidays, I can remember when my mother had bought me that game for Nintendo. Yeah, it it, it was the, the the shit back then. Definitely, definitely. So I had to. You know, for all the nostalgic people that watch my channel, that watch the Blacktop Goat Classic, like, subscribe, and share, uh, you know, I had to throw that one back. But it was the Bulls' defense and talent meeting the Celtics' defense and chemistry. Uh, Bonafide ballers, man. Uh, like I said, Larry Legend, Scottie Pippen, they when they meet up against each other, they go hard against each other on a black top. And any of my uh games where Pippen and Larry Bird met up, they always had a have a great matchup. And this one was nothing short of, you know, those guys going off. Um Rondo's defense is top notch, man. Top notch defender. He blocked Jordan, stole it from D. Rose. He uh, His defense helped a lot with controlling the game. Uh, the Celtics was off to a fast start, man. I, uh, but once again, the D, the Chicago Bulls defense, ramped up. 
you know, ramp, ramped up and it, it was on and popping. Uh, John Havlicek and Larry Bird, John Havlicek and Larry Bird had combined for 16 points. It was hard deciding who was going to get the king of the streets for that championship win over the Bulls. Um, it was a couple of things in that matchup that was just like amazing showing, you know, I see what our net meant with putting that five together and, you know, they really did their thing. But like I said, it was hard putting, picking the king of the streets because Havlicek had eight, Bird had eight, each was equally effective, but I wound up going with Le, with uh, Legend for the king of the streets for that game, for the championship game, because he didn't turn the ball over. Uh, he that's that's basically it, you know. If he didn't, if he'd have turned that ball over just once, I'd have gave it to John H. And John H. would have held it down two times in a row, but he did though. And uh, I like this. I I I'm gonna find a way to bring John H. back to the blacktop because I thoroughly enjoy watching his avatar get busy. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. You know, um. John H., he had hit the game winner after uh, Artis Gilmore had tied the game up to extend the game. And usually when the game gets extended, I, I got I get another five minutes out of it possibly, right? But as soon as Artis tied the game up and extended the game at 20, John H. came behind the screen and that was it. That was it. Awesome game. Awesome tournament. So in closing, being that the Cavs, being that Johnny Arnett's Cavs were the weakest link in these six, I didn't expect them to win. Uh, They were hands down the weakest bunch. Um, and if it wasn't for Blake Griffin, uh, Blake's Blake missing that that game winning layup over the smaller Mark Price, uh, we probably would have a different discussion. I would like this. I would, you know, I would like to see how that Clippers team did up against them Bulls. But uh, yeah, man, because because Johnny, you know, he was dead on about. The Bulls' defense as they crushed the Cavs and was able to slow the Celtics down when it got ahead. Um, Johnny said in his video that his the all-time franchise Bulls is has suffocating defense. So that team definitely showed it. That five, that starting five, showed it on a blacktop, definitely. And as for the Celtics, man, the Celtics three-game run was amazing. Three tough matchups that their defense, chemistry, and shooting pushed them ahead of all the competition. I'll be grabbing my scuba gear for another top five deep dive into Johnny Arnett's Celtics starters in the next episode. Thanks for watching and listening in on this episode. I hope you all enjoyed the tournament. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday. Uh, However you celebrate it, you know, um, wish you a happy new year. I wish the new year brings you great tidings. Uh, I'm excited for the next quarter of this channel because i'm already have the next three tournaments lined up uh starting with the coaches premier league that'll be starting in the new year in january like this video and leave your comments to get the classic games into this algorithm into the basketball algorithm subscribe to the channel 
hit the notification bell to keep up with everything going on at the black top goat classic i've been your host william goat and with so much war going on in the world what we all need right now is peace